Too many smart, dedicated candidates fail the MCQ1 exam, not because they aren't good enough, but because they don't know where to focus. By the way, I am Dr. Bruni, the lead tutor at Medcognito, and with our staff and all our team members, we've worked with hundreds of MCQ1 candidates, both international and Canadian trained, and we've seen firsthand what separates those who pass from those who struggle. There's one thing you need to understand that this MCQ1 exam isn't about random memorization. The exam, it's well-structured, it's a strategic exam, and it's predictable if you understand how the exam works. Unfortunately, many candidates don't really understand how the MCCQ1 exam is structured or works. So let's walk through the framework that will give you the clarity to study with purpose and to pass the exam with confidence. First, I want you to understand that the MCQ1 is built on a two-axis blueprint. So we have axis one, and axis two. The first axis is what we call the physician activities. So if you look at the first axis, you will see various things. And the first part is the physician's activities. Now, what are the components of the physician activities? We have assessment and diagnosis, management, communication. We have professionalism and ethics. So let's pick physician activities and let's delve into it. And the physician activities, as we said, assessment and diagnosis, that part covers 45% of the exam. So with an exam which has 230 questions for a total day exam, 115 in the morning, 115 in the afternoon after a 45 optional break, assessment and diagnosis covers 45% of the exam. So that means about 104 questions out of the 230 will cover assessment and diagnosis. When it comes to management, 35% of the questions will focus on management. So you are looking about 80 questions. When it comes to communication, 10% of the questions will focus on communication. So out of the 230 questions, you are looking at about 23 questions. When it comes to professionalism and ethics, another 10% of the questions will focus there. So you're looking about 23 questions in all. Now, the second axis, do you remember we talked about the first axis, which is the vision activity? The second axis talks about dimensions of care. So when it comes to dimensions of care, we have under it health promotion, acute illness, chronic illness, and psychosocial aspects where people talk about psychiatry, mental health, you know, all that. So with dimensions of care, and the health promotion, you have 20% of the questions to be under health promotion. So approximately 47 questions. Acute illness, that's what a lot of people talk about, emergency medicine, right? Acute illness, how diseases present acutely. About 35% of the cases will be under that. So if you do your calculations, you should expect about 80 questions from acute illness. When it comes to chronic illness, you're looking at about 30%. So you're looking at 69 questions. And then when you look at psychosocial aspects, you're looking at 15% of the questions. So you're looking at, say, 34 questions. So let me just recap these two axes, physician activities and dimensions of care. Physician activities, assessment and diagnosis, management, communication, professionalism and ethics, right? Dimensions of care, we have health promotion, acute illness, chronic illness, and psychosocial aspects. So with all these things I talked about, just think about emerge. Think about these two axes merging, physician activities and dimensions of care. So it will, in reality, if you put it on a grid, create 16 zones, of areas of study, 16. And your goal is to cover high yield intersections efficiently. So I'm going to take you through these zones one by one to help you to know how to deal with this. And I'm going to focus on three key zones. So I'm going to talk about zone one, which is acute illness and assessment, where you are looking at about 36 plus or minus questions. So where you are looking at this zone, you're looking at emergencies like, you know, if you go through the MCC objectives, and so this is where you also have to link your studies to the objectives. So if you go to the MCC objectives, there are specific objectives like chest pain, altered mental status, trauma, sepsis. So 
with these objectives, this is what the emergency portion of the exam is looking at. And it is up to you to go there. So on the chest pain, if you look at the breakdown of that objective, you will see conditions like maybe pericarditis, acute myocardial infarction, chest trauma. All of them will come under chest pain as an objective. And they can chest pain as an objective can meet under acute illness with assessment. Okay, So you need to spot danger fast and act decisively. That is what acute illness is all about. And the MCCQ1 is testing your ability to keep patients alive and safe. And so this zone of acute illness and assessment carries massive weight on the exam and it tests real world clinical judgment. Now, I want to take you to the second zone, which I want you to focus on, which is chronic illness and management. So this one, you're looking at about 52 plus or minus questions. If you look at the way the grid is spread on the MCC website, and this includes chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, COPD, heart failure, you know, chronic mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, and you'll be expected to know the Canadian guidelines on these chronic conditions, how to treat them, how to monitor them, and how to escalate your care. In other words, how to move the patient from a primary care provider to a specialist. The third zone I want to focus on, which is also very, very important, is communication plus ethics plus psychosocial behavior. And this goes to about 45 plus or minus questions. So these points test your ability to manage people, not just pathologies. So you're looking at cases or scenarios where you are managing people and the expectation like end of life care, you know, consent, capacity, cultural sensitivity, abuse, ethical dilemmas. And success here depends on your clinical judgment, you know, how empathetic you are and your professionalism, not just memorization of medical facts. So here's how you can structure your study week around the blueprint. If I were you, I would take a typical Monday. I'm going to focus on acute presentations like sepsis, trauma, altered level of consciousness as stated in the MCC objectives. And then on Tuesday, I will take conditions like, you know, chronic management of conditions where I look at guideline-driven care for things like diabetes, hypertension, COPD, major depressive disorder. Then on Wednesday, I will look at preventative care. So screening, immunizations, lifestyle counseling. Then on Thursday, I'll look at concepts like ethics, communication, psychosocial care, tackle sensitive and judgment-based scenarios as well. And then on Friday, I will do simulated MCQ blocks. I'll review, I'll make sure they are timed, they are focused, and they look like the exam. And this is where I'll really encourage that, please, the Medical Council of Canada has set their own wonderful questions on their website. Get some money, buy it, do it at a timed pace because that is as close to the exam as it can get. And then what do you do on Saturday? So usually I prefer to rest on Saturday to reconnect. I empty my head, no studying. And this is crucial for long-term retention and mental clarity. Remember, you are doing this for about six to nine months of exam preparation. And then on Sunday, you can review your weak areas, revisit your blueprint zones and tighten the loose ends. This plan I'm giving you isn't about intensity alone. It's about strategy and sustainability. So the important point and the important tip I want you to take is this. You don't need to study everything. You need to study what matters most. And what matters most is what is in the MCC objectives. So you have to let the exam blueprints guide your priorities. Let real clinical scenarios sharpen your judgment and let a structured plan replace overwhelm with control because many candidates overwhelm themselves with many textbooks and they want to read cover to cover. No, rather use those textbooks as reference materials and pick the objectives one by one. So if, for example, you pick chest pain, what are the topics on the chest pain I need to know? If you go to the MCC objectives, you realize that there are components under each objective. We call them enabling objectives. So look at the topics which appear under the enabling objectives. Now go to your beloved textbook, okay, and rather focus on those topics. So you don't need to read everything under cardiology. You don't need to read everything under gastroenterology. No, 
the exam has focused applications and focused topics based on the objectives and that is what you need to focus on and if you want more structure we've created something at medcognito for you which helps you to structure your learning in a three-month fashion or a six-month study plan and it is customized to teach you what to study and which mcc objectives to focus on each week so we've done all that work for you and it's the same system that we've used to help hundreds of candidates to track and pass the MCQ1 confidently. So what you need to do is just go to the link in the comment section under this video and download. So in summary, first, you've got to know the exam grade. Second, you've got to prioritize your high yield intersections. Third, you've got to practice timed clinical reasoning based on questions. Fourth, you've got to get enough rest because this learning is a marathon. It's not a sprint, okay? And use objective-based plans, not random review and random talks that people give. So the MCQ one is tough, but it's not vague. It's clear and it's structured. And with the right strategy, you can absolutely pass this exam. I am Dr. Bonnie, and if you need guidance, Metcognito has proven system to help you stay focused, stay organized so you can succeed. And we believe that with the right map, the right mindset, the right mentor, you won't just pass, you will own this exam. So I want to see where there is success. Get in touch, make sure your exam preparation is as you want it and go into the exam with confidence by following the MCC's blueprint for this particular exam.